All right, great question that came in a few hours ago that I just saw from you guys. I wanna thank you again for being so engaged uh, with our Q and A's that uh, we've been going on. There's parts of my day, I'm sure like you guys, that I feel sturdy and balanced and anchored and focused uh, on our future. And then there's parts of my day that get a little wobbly because of the um, because of the uncertainty that's happening, you know, in life as we're trying to figure this whole thing out. Anyway, uh, okay, so the question was, um, in my entire professional wrestling career, what is the one match or do I have a match that is most meaningful? The answer to that is yes. And of course, my very first match that I ever had as a professional wrestler in San Antonio, Texas, and my last match that I had as a professional wrestler in New York City, uh, where I started my career in the WWE, were very memorable. But the one match that I will always, always carry with me deep in my heart, in my bones, happened in Honolulu, Hawaii. And it was the first and only time that I had ever wrestled in Hawaii. And the reason why it was so, and there was, it was not a big pay-per-view, there were no, um, there were, it was not a big television production. It was what we call a live event or a house show in the world of professional wrestling, where it's just an event. And <clears throat> the reason why it meant so much to me was we, as many of you know, um, I did a lot of my growing up in the islands um, of Hawaii. And when we were there, my grandparents, my grandfather, High Chief Peter Maivia, was a professional wrestler. Um, the first pro wrestler to put the island of Samoa on the map. My grandmother, uh, Leah Maivia, was his wife. And my grandfather owned a professional wrestling promotion in the islands of Hawaii that my, that he ran. My grandmother ran it with him. My dad and my mom helped them too as well promote this, uh, uh wrestling. And this was in the late seventies when we were there. I was just a little boy and they struggled, man. I mean, my grandparents struggled. My parents struggled with this promotion. They could never get it off the ground. Um, and, you know, we all, all five of us lived in a little apartment on Kapiolani Boulevard that's still there today that I always loved driving by and looking up at all the memories. But Hawaii for me, um, on the multiple times we lived there, always represented struggle. It always represented tough times. It always represented just a, um, a force of our human nature of just to grit it out and try and make it. So when I say, you know, they were struggling, we were running wrestling shows uh, across the island in the military bases every week, which is hard to do, and maybe drawing two, 300 people. Um, and that's what the military pass, where it's like the military and their whole family gets to go for like five bucks. Um, and then once a month in Hawaii, my grandparents and my parents would run the big show. And the big show was at an arena that's still there and it's called the, um, the Blaisdell Arena. And the Blaisdell Arena is famous in Hawaii. Uh, all the biggest acts in the world over the decades have gone there. Elvis Presley, the Rolling Stones, you name it. Everybody goes, if they stop over in Hawaii, they play the Blaisdell Arena. So once a month we would, we would wrestle at the Blaisdell Arena not draw any people, not make any money. So it was always struggle. We wound up leaving. Um, my parents wound up leaving Hawaii and they took me with them, obviously. And we went to New Zealand. We lived there for a little while. And then my grandfather died in 1982. When he died, it was his, it was his dream for my grandmother to take over the promotion. My grandmother took over the promotion. She struggled with it too. Uh, as well. It, it got a little hot. It got a little successful. And then eventually my grandmother, um, of all things, um, uh, she was, uh, she was bought up, um, on federal charges for extortion. My grandmother was, um, she was like the black widow from cocaine cowboys, just minus dealing the cocaine. She was, she was tough. She was a tough woman. Anyway, she wound up, uh, the feds seized her assets, sent her off the island. She became homeless. And that story, <laughs> that, that, I digress. That grandmother's story is a story, that's a long story that one day I'll share with you guys, certainly over some Terramana tequila. I'll need a couple of those drinks before I share that story. Um, I won't leave you hanging though. My grand, eventually what I did, I found a legal loophole in the system when I was 19 or 20 years old. 
um, that eventually got her out of that, and we were out her. We were able to get her um, a monthly stipend. My college professors would be very proud of me because they did tell me to go to law school, but I was like, no, I'm not smart enough, and my grades suck. <laughs> my study habits are the shits. Anyway, um, I didn't want to leave you hanging on that homeless story. She eventually got out of that. I will tell you everything down the road. That's another story. So Hawaii always represented this kind of struggle, um, including what I just shared with you, the little bit I shared about my grandmother and losing the wrestling business. So when Vince McMahon approached me at the height of my professional wrestling career, the first run of my professional wrestling career, and he said, hey, what do you think about going to Hawaii, small show? He was like, you probably don't want to go because it's a lot of travel. And I said, no, I cut him off. I said, you don't understand. It would be the most meaningful show of my life. And he kind of looked at me and said, really? I said, absolutely, book it. So I headlined that show, we went to Hawaii, and um, I wrestled a guy by the name of Chris Jericho, a very good buddy of mine today. And I gotta tell you guys, it, I have, I've had the honor and the privilege, and I've been a lucky son of a bitch, to have the career that I've had in professional wrestling. I've wrestled around the world, every, every major arena in this country, every major arena around the world, and the most meaningful match I've ever had was to go back to Hawaii at the Blaisdell Center and be the main event. Sold it out, by the way, faster than Elvis did. I I'm just saying. <laughs> when I got that phone call, like you just beat Elvis uh, with how fast the sellout happens. I said, is that right? Uh, I love you, King. Um, but how cool was that? I was so grateful to hear that news. Um, we, I, it was so special, I flew my entire family in for this because everybody knew what this moment meant, including my grandmother. I flew my grandmother in, I have goosebumps right now thinking about it. I flew her in, she was sitting there, and my music hits, if you smell, bang, I come out. I see them, and um, I give everybody a kiss at the front row. We have our match, it was a phenomenal match. Chris Jericho was a great dance partner for me. And afterwards, I get on the mic and I thank the crowd and I just let them know um, how meaningful this is to me and to my family. Because for years and years and years, Hawaii just meant struggle. So I thank them. And what was beautiful about that night was, and I have wrestled in front of some wild crowds that were on fire. And you could just feel it. I mean, there could be 50,000 people on fire, but it would still feel so intimate to me. Like, like I could reach out and we would just have this connection. That night was special because the people of Hawaii, the culture, they all knew what it meant for me to go back. And afterwards, have the match, we go in the back and um, celebrate with the family, quiet celebration. Um, and, uh, you know, we're back there and um, <laughs> Excuse me a second. Um, we're all in the back. It's just me and my family. It's very intimate. We're in the we're in this dressing room, this sweaty ass dressing room that stinks. Uh, because all the wrestlers were in there, including myself, and they all leave, and we're just we're just back there, just me and my family. And um, you know what it represented was so beautiful to have this moment with them because, and to hear my grandmother say it, she was like. She called me Tuifiai, which is my Samoan name, Tuifiai. And she said, um, she said, we finally made it. We finally made it. Oh, man. So, yeah, there were a lot of tears that day in that locker room. Uh, but tears of joy and gratitude. So, she said, we finally made it. You know, big hugs. And we went out to eat that night. I don't even remember where we went. But anyway, um, now, for me, um, going back to Hawaii and the culture means so much. This is why I try and bring as many movies and productions as I possibly can bring there to Hawaii uh, for the people, the culture, the economy. And uh, it will always hold that special place for me. Every time I go back, I drive by the Blaisdell Arena. The Blaisdell Arena is right next to my old high school, McKinley High School, and I just look and I just shake my head. I drive all around the island. I'm just so grateful. So. Anyway, this is 10 minutes of your life you will never get back. I want to thank, I don't remember who asked me that, but whoever you were, I want to thank you because it was a very special question. 
And it was a very meaningful answer to me. And on top of all that, uh, I just find, I just found out today, um, that, uh, I just realized today that today is my grandfather. It's his birthday if he were alive. So it's his birthday in heaven. The high chief Peter Maivia, uh, if I had a Terramana, I would raise it to him. <laughs> he loved to drink. Uh, a beautiful man, highly respected and loved man. So this one's for you, high chief. And thank you guys for your questions. Truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And, um, and yeah, of all the matches I've ever had, that was the most meaningful. All right, I love y'all, and um, most importantly, stay healthy, stay safe, especially this week. This week is gonna be a big one. So we gotta stay vigilant, and uh, we gotta take care of each other. We're gonna get through this. All right, love you guys, stay healthy. Thanks again, see ya.